All right, this is Mr. Ranger. We're talking about Algebra Pace 1106 today. You are in the last three. Yay! I was looking ahead at 1108, and it is a review of the entire course. So 1106 and 1107 are the last ones that cover new material. And actually, 1106, dealing with story problems and formulas, I don't think you're going to find too hard. Um, compared to some of the other content that you've had. And you're going to be applying some of the math that you've done in earlier pieces. But uh, I want to just talk to you for a minute because a lot of students do get frustrated with story problems. I'm going to show you a picture here. I'm actually standing behind the camera. So I hold this up and uh, the title of this track says, Can You Find the Cow? And if I turn it sideways, do you see a cow or do you see just a mass of black and white? And you're like, what in the world? How can there be a cow? All right, now what if I hold up one where I've highlighted the face of the cow? Now do you see the eyes and you see the head and now you see the ears, right, and the nose? Okay, so now that you've seen that, when I come back, <laughs> With this picture, you're like, oh yeah, now I see it, okay? And honestly, that illustration, I think, is a great illustration of what happens with story problems. Because I think, um, and teachers and parents, you need to understand this, that um, a student looking at a story problem feels like they're looking at that cow picture where they can't see anything. And they're like, I don't know, I don't know how to begin, okay? And uh, part of it may be they're just begging for help and trying to get you to do the problem for them. But quite honestly, it, it may be the same feeling that you have looking at the cow picture and saying, I don't see it. How come other people see it? It doesn't make sense. So as a teacher, okay, and if you're the parent or you're the supervisor, sometimes our role is to just put in a few lines, okay, give a little bit of a structure so that they can begin to see, the, oh, now I see what kind of a problem that is, and now I think I can figure out how to solve it, all right? So, and each page, you know, each section in this page 1106 um, just has a few problems and each one is a little bit different. They're similar to the example that they give and they're similar to types of problems that they've done, students have done in earlier paces. But they're just different enough that each one looks like a unique cow picture. So my recommendations are, sip of coffee first. <clears throat> See, you're lucky you don't have to smell my coffee breath. My recommendations are, that as a parent, you maybe sit next to your teen who's working through this and not just have them shoved off on their own, sit with them and keep guiding their thinking. Have, your, have the score key open on your lap so that you can see maybe the steps that are involved in how to get the answer. But keep asking questions. And whenever we're doing story problems, one of the very first questions I like to ask, or formula problem, is what is the, what information do we know? And then on a piece of scrap paper, or if you have room right there on the page, list. What do we know? What is given to us? Do we know the rate of increase? Do we know the rate of depreciation, you know, the percent? Uh, what are we solving for? There should just be one piece of information um, that is unknown, okay? And everything else is somehow given. And then you want to try to find the correct way of setting it up or the formula. And a lot of times, in fact, I, I want to say all the time, um, there should be something that's equal to something. Okay, so you're looking for two quantities that are equal. And maybe there's something you have to manipulate over here, multiply by something, and then subtract something, but then it should equal something. If you have an equals in there, that means you have an equation. And if you have an equation, then that means you can solve for the unknown. Now, the unknown might not be the thing on the right-hand side of the equal sign. That might be given. But maybe the unknown is the very first variable that's in the problem. Okay, but ask yourself what information is given and write it down. Okay, so because a lot of times just seeing it in a list is helpful. And then think about what formula did they just talk about in the 
practice problems and in this section, and those are the ones you're most likely going to use. And then try to plug in everything that you can. All right, so once your teen has gotten that far, if they're still stuck and they can't see the cow, then you as a teacher may need to look at the score key and give them a hint or two to, again, with questions, trying to move them along and get them to see the next step. You're not trying to solve it for them and you're certainly not just trying to give them the answer, but trying to get them to think and give them time. If they're focusing and they're, and they're coming up with suggestions, uh, they're more likely to come up with the right answer and think, all right? Uh, a lot of times, a question that I will ask students as I'm working with them on tough problems, like story problems, is they'll ask me, I don't know what to do. And of course, as a man, number one, and as a teacher, number two, I want to solve it for them. But it's better to stop and ask them, well, what do you think you should do? and let them offer some ideas, okay? And even if they don't come up with the right idea, it'll help you understand what they're thinking better and see if there's a problem. And maybe even try their method. It might be different than the way the score key was gonna solve it, but it'll give you a window into how are they solving it and what are they thinking, all right? And, and there may be a different way of coming up with the answer, and that's fine, although the goal is to apply the algebra that we've been learning all year to this real life, if you want to call this real life, problem solving is real life, okay? And uh, see that algebra can help us solve problems. Then the last comment I'll make is there's a section that, uh, there's like a whole page of formulas. A lot of those should be review from previous years, so it's not like your student needs to um, from scratch memorize all of them so I would do a little quiz and see which ones they already know and which ones they don't know and put the ones they don't know on a three by five card and use that but then quiz on it and review and review and try to get them to memorize those few that they don't have down yet so that they can use that on um, when they get to the checkup self test and pace test if you have a student who just really struggles with math and um, memorizing and trying to apply the right formula and, and risking maybe making a mistake with the formula is going to mess up their whole problem then i would certainly say write the formulas out on a reference card and let them use that while they're doing their checkup self-test and pace test but again i would just say that i would reserve that for students who really struggle and uh, that would just you know having to memorize it would just make this a mountain you want them to have the tools that they need, okay? And, uh, and again, at this point, we should be able to use a calculator and use it accurately and uh, be able to get the right answers. The last thing I'll mention, and then I'm going to do one more video for this pace, and, um, and that is to, as you're looking at these problems that involve percents, the, uh, pace, the pace always um, just gives it to you as a percent, like 30% or 25%. And don't forget to always convert those to decimals, okay? So 0.25 or 0.3. And if it's 5%, remember it would be 0 .0, uh, yeah, 0 0.05 as the percent. So you have to convert those into decimals before you can um, solve the problem. And then if you are solving and getting a decimal answer and you get, and it's supposed to be a percent, convert it back the other direction, move the decimal twice, turn it back into a percent if that's what they're asking for. Okay, so I think I think you should do fine with this pace. Um, at the end of this pace, there's a lesson that I want to go over. And, uh, but uh, certainly if there are specific problems that you as a teacher, parent, uh, student are stuck on, and you say, I just really wish we had some insight. I wish somebody could help connect the dots so we could see the cow, you know, for this particular problem. Uh, shoot me an email and they'll be happy to Pull the pace out again, look at that particular problem and see if we can at least get you started on it and then you can uh, finish it on your own, okay?